Yom Atzma'ut, as we all know, falls out in the middle of Sfirat Omer. I would like to suggest that this is not just a coincidence, but in fact, there are many aspects of Sfirat Omer, which in fact are reflective of and can be informative of our Yom Atzma'ut experience and our cause for celebration. In this brief Devar Torah, let me share with you one specific example of that, and that comes from one of the very interesting halachic discussions regarding Sfiras Omer, but I think if we look at it from the proper perspective, we will see that it also has hashkafic implications, not only for Sfiras Omer, but especially for Yom Ha'atzma'ut. One of the classical questions that is discussed halachically is why we don't say the brach of Shehechiyanu on the mitzvah of Sfiras Omer. One of the earliest and perhaps the most famous discussion of this question is in the writings of the Baal HaMa'or, of Zrachi HaLevi, one of the great medieval commentaries, one of the Rishonim from southern France. And in his commentary at the Enem Masechet Psachim, he suggests an answer for this question, which is quite shocking and profound. He says that the reason we don't say Shechianu first Verda Omer is because Shechianu is said on happy occasions or even for happy and celebratory mitzvot. However, when it comes to Sir HaOmer, he says, Ein bo zecher ela la'agmat nafshenu ul'churban batenu. That Sfer HaOmer necessarily recalls the Karban HaOmer. And since we don't have that sacrifice anymore, because we no longer have a Beis HaMikdash, by definition, whether we realize it or not, every time we count Sfer HaOmer, it is a little bit of a reminder about what we don't have. In his very profound words, la'agmat nafshenu ul'churban batenu. That is one, as I say, perhaps the earliest and most famous answer to the question. However, in the writings of Rav Soloveitchik, we find a second and very different answer. Rav Soloveitchik suggested that Shehechianu is said on occasions when we reach a certain milestone. As the text of the bracha itself indicates, Shehechianu, the gimanu v'higiyanu, lazman hazeh. When there's a specific time, a specific milestone that we've reached, that's when we say the bracha of Shehechianu. However, he explained, when it comes to Sfirah Omer, the essence isn't the milestone of any given day, but rather the anticipation of the next day, and the next day after that, one, two, three, until we eventually will get to 49, and then be able to celebrate Chag HaShavuot after that. If we think about it, these are not just two different answers to the question, but in fact, in a certain sense, opposite answers. The Bahamor's approach focuses on the past, whereas Rav Soloveitchik's approach focuses on the future. The Bahamor is focusing on the past, what we have no longer, the Churban Beit HaMikdash. And Rav Soloveitchik is turning our attention towards the future, how each day of Sfirat Omer anticipates the following day and the day after that. This idea of past and future is not just about Shehechianu, but I believe is a lay motif of the entire Sfirat Omer. What are we counting? The days from when we left Egypt, or the days until Matan Torah and Chag HaShavuot at Har Sinai? And the answer is both. Both past and future are the dominant themes together, commingling in Sfirat Omer, and they are reflected in a number of ways, including these two answers, specifically for the question of Shehechianu. And this, I believe, is a profound lesson for us. A Jew lives in two dimensions, with two different forms of time consciousness, an awareness of the past, always, and at the very same time, an anticipation for the future. When it comes to Yom Ha'atzma'ut, I believe, when we think about our contemporary state, it's especially important to maintain these two perspectives. If you think about it, looking towards the future, it could be the cause of much fear or perhaps even sadness. We think about our demography, the looming threat of nuclear Iran, Islamification of Europe, and then we could add insult to injury and focus on all the internal problems. Ashkenazi versus Sephardi, Dati versus Chiloni, Haredi versus Tzioni. One could say if one was really depressed that Iran won't have to kill us. We might just do the job ourselves, Khalila. But from the perspective of the future that may be the case. But therefore we have to realize that it's important to always look at the future with another eye always on the past. We must remember the perspective of the past and the wisdom that comes 
from experience. If we think about just how far we've come in the last 70 years, how much has been accomplished, how many challenges have already been overcome, how much growth we have had in the state of Israel when it comes to Torah and religious life, how much accomplishment, how much growth has come technologically, economically, militarily, it's really mind-boggling. When you go back even further, not just in the 70 years of the state, but if you analyze these 70 years in light of what happened even before that, how we have survived, what we have accomplished, it's overwhelming, it is breathtaking, and it is nothing short of inspiring. So if we look towards the future, yes, with all of its challenges, but with a mature perspective of the recent and distant past, then we will be filled on this and hopefully many future celebrations of Yom Ha'atzma'ut not only with great hakarat hatov for the incredible gift that Hashem has given us with the state of Israel, but also brimming with optimism and confidence. It won't be easy, but it never has been. We have done great things in the past and there's no reason to think we can't accomplish even more great and greater things in the future. Our history has taught us that much and Yom Ha'atzmut allows us this moment to celebrate in the present using our eye towards the past to give us great confidence and anticipation for an even more glorious future.